well, I didn't really intend to pull weeds while we were getting ready to start this video today on our Wednesday walkabout, which is, I'm going to entitle it, What Comes Next? walkabout because we're getting ready or I think of it as getting ready to put the bed the front beds to bed for summer because all of the color and the abundance and everything of spring is pretty much past all of the larkspur and foxglove have gone to seed and I have harvested it and so now I'm just trying to get things tidy before the rest of the summer sets in and it gets really hot and as you know i don't do a ton of color so there won't be a lot to plant but before i do that i've got a couple of housekeeping things number one here's my my question of the day for you it's actually a, a request if you would really support anybody who is commenting below that is really suffering from drought in California or the storms in the southeast and the Midwest. There's a lot of extreme weather going on right now and I, I especially feel for those of you out uh, in the West who are suffering wildfires and extreme drought. I know what that's like. And so that's my request of you guys. If you would just express some words of support for all of those people who right now aren't enjoying the kind of pretty day that I'm enjoying right, enjoying right now, though it's a little bit windy. Um, secondly, I can't believe these words are coming out of my mouth, but my book is, is ready for pre-order on Amazon. I will put a link below. I think Stuart put a link in the community tab. I am starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel. We'll, we're still putting lots of, um, of end points and little extra things into it. There'll still be something of a process left, but nevertheless, it is ready for pre-order the Elegant and Edible Garden. And it's just gonna basically be about how I started a garden from scratch with the potage at the very heart of it, the Elegant and Edible Garden. So that is, that is number two. And now let's kind of talk about what's gonna come next in, in the garden. So I've got this in my hand because Stuart and I were just commenting, this is high, high mosquito season. So we were just commenting that this service that I got a little while ago, the Oklahoma City Mosquito Militia, and if you contact them, I am going to guess that there is probably some kind of franchise in your area. But this is an organic, doesn't hurt the pollinators, spray that is a, a consortium of botanicals that helps get rid of mosquitoes. And after one application, I would say it works so-so, but after two applications, I definitely think it's effective and I will continue to moderate, moderate its efficacy. But nevertheless, you guys might wanna check this out if you're having mosquito issue, issues because it definitely seems to have worked and it also doesn't seem to have done anything to decrease the beneficials and my happy pollinators and flying insects. So those are some kind of housekeeping things. So what comes next in the garden? Well, I am getting ready to, it won't be too much longer before the fever view, fever view is done. So tomorrow morning probably I'll cut a huge bouquet. This is the golden fever few that I love so much that I let to go, go to seed everywhere and that is that beautiful ferny tuft of gold that you see in my spring garden. See, I can't resist, I see something in here. Um, and it's just wonderful. So I let a good bit of it go to seed so I can collect it and sprinkle it around later. It is one of those things that has uh, full permission in my garden to run amok and self seed wherever it wants to. But that I will probably tackle this weekend. So this weekend, I'm really going to put this one long expansive uh, bed to rest for the summer. Something else that I'm going to be doing, and I'm also waiting to do this because today it's supposed to get up into the 90s. It's breezy today, but next week it's supposed to be in the lower 90s and in the 80s. So I'm going to take that opportunity to give a light prune to my boxwood and I'm going to spray them with some wilt proof. I've got the bottle up there and I will show it to you. And of course I'll link it below. And then I'm gonna do a little bit more mulching. I'm gonna do just a smattering of some more lantana around for some color, but then I'm gonna call it a day. 
If you guys have followed me for any length of time, you know that I don't do, I don't do a lot of seasonal color in the summer, but there are some perennials that are still going to be coming out. All of the daisies, the Sedum Autumn Joy, there's some salvias in here. Uh, there's some other things. And stuff really has repaired itself from the storm pretty well. I, I can't believe it. So I'm, I'm very happy about that. So let's go this way a little bit, you guys. And some of this stuff that is starting to go vertical, I will give it a, a tending and a clipping and just basically I'm gonna do lots of garden grooming. And then I'll pretty much hold off other than watering and weeding until fall, until the season gets ready to change. Now, speaking of fall, you guys, um, I spoke yesterday with my friend Michelle at Color Blends and I'm getting ready to order my tulips for fall. So this is my heads up to you guys that you definitely want to pre-order your tulips from Color Blends now. They won't bill you or ship you until this fall, but she said some varieties are already selling out. Their business has just gone gangbusters. A lot of people that got into gardening during COVID obviously have gotten into bulb gardening. So alliums in particular, she said, are starting to go fast. Uh, some of the things that I'm going to order, and you might want to run over to their website to look at them. Uh, I love the blends, French Rose Blend, which I have used for years. I didn't last year, but I missed it, so I'm gonna go back to it. Uh, also, I love Smooch, and there was another one called Gentle Giants. Those are some of my favorite ones. So you guys might wanna head over and look at those and I'll put a link to Color Blends below. Absolutely love those guys. And if you call them, tell them that Linda sent you. So again, just more pruning and things over in here. Another thing that I'm gonna be doing that I might encourage you guys to do as I'm ordering my tulips, I'm gonna kind of come up with my spring inspiration board. And I, I would encourage you guys to do the same things that you might wanna try for next year, but if you don't record them, you'll forget about it. So you might wanna put those on your inspiration board and see how the colors all work together. It's kind of a fun thing to do when it gets really, really hot out. Now let's come up here and Here's another, let me grab, Stuart, let me grab this wilt proof to show you. So this is what I was telling you about wilt proof. It's an anti-desiccant, I believe that's the correct terminology. And what it does is help prevent moisture loss. So after I give the boxwood a gentle pruning and I don't wanna have those dry cut edges, then I'll give this a squirt of this wilt proof. It's great for preserving your greens at Christmas time and things of that nature. And again, I'll put a link below. It's a anti-transparent and the directions are on the container. So it will really help, help things that might be really vulnerable to the heat, at least your evergreens, I think it might protect them a little bit more. So here's my next, my next thing that's going on. So I got my window box finished and now I'm just waiting for it to finish filling in. It's getting enough sun now so that it should start exploding pretty soon. I continually am pinching off. Let's show this, Stuart. You guys, most of you already know this, but I'm gonna be pinching off starts just right above a leaf node, or right below a leaf node of this coleus. I'll take the lower leaves off and I'll just put this in water and in no time at all, it will root. And that way I can spread this around the garden and in pots. You can do the same thing with sweet potato vine. The other thing that this does is when I pinch it back, the good thing about that is then it kind of exposes some things that weren't getting quite enough light underneath to the sunlight and they'll fill out a little bit more. And that's a good thing to do this time of year. It's also a great time, especially if, if you guys are gonna be going on vacation pretty soon, here's, here's a tip. 
right before you go on vacation is a wonderful time to cut back any of your leggy annuals or even your perennials and then give them a feed before you leave for your vacation and they can recover and by the time you get back they'll be pretty again. I do that with most of my annuals and a lot of my perennials. Sadly, I'm not going on a vacation anytime soon, but if I were, I would do that. Another thing that I like to do before I go on vacation is if you've got planters, <clears throat> say this one, this one's a little bit too heavy for me to move, but it's full on the front side, <coughs> but on the back side, it's not quite as full because it's not getting as much sun, then what I like to do, <coughs> excuse me, this wind, what I like to do is rotate these plants while I am gone on vacation so that the ugly part is to the front, but it has a chance to get more light and kind of recover, and the pretty part is to the back, and that way it can grow a little bit more evenly. And I like to do that before I go on vacation with as many as many pots as as possible and just give them all a really good watering and feed obviously before you leave another thing that i tend to do before i go on vacation is because i have so many container plantings the small ones i will typically take off of their plant stand or wherever they are in the garden and i'll congregate them all together sometimes in a little kitty bath little kitty pool rather or all in one shady location in the back. That way the person that waters for me doesn't have to locate them, Stuart, that would be you, have to locate them all around the garden. They'll be congregated in one place for, for relatively easy watering. And they'll also be in the shade so they won't be exposed to high winds and high sun when I'm not there to monitor them. Now this is something else that's kind of fun, you guys. <clears throat> and I'll get those in water as soon as I can. So I have a little bit of a dilemma, a, a back porch and a front porch dilemma. And what that is, is that, and I will show you this next, in one of our next videos, because I'm gonna redo the back porch. I have several of these marching up and down the back steps that lead up to my back door. These uh, multi-ball boxwood topiaries. Now, two of the large ones that I've had for years and years, I finally realized that I did lose them in the last Arctic blast. Now, it was hard for me to tell because they kind of were preserved in green. They, they stayed kind, pretty much green, but they never put out new growth. And now slowly as it gets hot and windy, they're starting to turn brown and die. And so I've got this dilemma, what do I do with them? Well, here's what I think I'm going to do. <clears throat> I've got one like this that is still alive and intact. So likewise, these in the urns that run up and down my front porch, these have been here for many, many years. You can see here that this one was damaged in the ice storm. So this is an example of what I'll do to move it towards the front. Let this side get more light on the damaged side while I'm gone and out of town and hopefully it will start to recover some in better light exposure. But all of these have been in, um, in these urns for, I'm doing a Marilyn Monroe thing here with the wind, um, have been in these urns for a long time and they probably now need repotting and refreshing. So I'm gonna take this opportunity to uh, kill two birds with one stone. So, and I'll show you how I do this, but I'm gonna take these out of these urns and I'm going to transplant them and replace the two that died on my back porch with these. The other ones were also getting a little bit big for this space. So that way I can take them out of these two tours and I can put them in the back and just replace those um, without, without a lot of loss in, in the look of the back porch. So basically here's what I'm gonna do. Ho Stuart, can you hold it for just a minute because I need to get something. I wasn't prepared this morning, 
But here is, here is my thinking and the technique that I'm going to use. So you guys know on my QVC line, I have these egg-shaped, I call them obelisks, but these egg-shaped topiary frames. And I'll put a link to these below. They're on QVC right now. And I think a lot of the different colors of things are starting to sell out, you guys. I know on the plant supports, I think they might all be sold out. So, and if you want one of those plant stands, you better get it now, because those are starting to sell pretty quickly too. But these egg-shaped obelisks are just wonderful. And I've got, two, I've got two more pots of these that are similar. And what I'm doing with them is putting these egg-shaped frames in these pots and then I planted some baby gem boxwoods in here from the Southern Living Plant Collection and what I'm going to do is I am going to clip these to form very much to the frame of my QVC egg-shaped topiary form, okay? And so when this fills in, and I keep clipping it, the inside, this baby gem boxwood, which I'll put a link to below, will perfectly form fit, and I think it will be so neat. Even Stuart is kind of shaking his head. Yeah, and it will not take, it will not take any time at all. By the end of the season, it will completely fill this frame. And around Christmas time, how fun would these be circled in like fairy lights or something? And if even if you've got an apartment or in, in a window, this would just be so fun, I think. So I had this aha moment. Okay, if I can do it with these, why can't I do it with these? So these are starting to get too big for these vertical metal two tours. And by the way, you guys, I got these, I don't know how many years ago. They're, they're kind of hard to find. And I think this is something that might be in my collection, my QVC collection for next year. So kind of stay tuned. But what I'm gonna do is remove these. I'm gonna transplant these, and then I'm gonna put in some new just probably two or three gallon boxwoods in here, all with new fresh soil. And then I'm gonna put this back in place and do the same thing that I did with this. Instead of having topiaries, poodle topiaries like these, I'm going to start custom clipping my own topiaries in this really tight conical shape that I've become just absolutely obsessed with and over time I'll have these in all three on my front porch and as you can see here I've got these in three different sizes this guy outgrew this form so this way I'll be able to have them all three in place marching up and down my serpentine wall and while the new boxwood are growing in place, these really wonderful forms will hold that verticality that I so like running up and down the wall from the street. And the same thing, I could, I could wind fairy lights around these or something, just really, really fun. Another thing that I sometimes like to do, maybe while the, the boxwood is still low, I can tuck in little pumpkins and make my own kind of pumpkin topiary inside these. But I think it'll be really, really fun. And I can't wait to do this project. So it's gonna be kind of a front porch, back porch, makeover, rethinking something, reinventing things without even getting anything new. I'm not spending a dime because I've got some boxwoods in the back that I think I can plant in these refreshed urns. So there you go, guys. That's kind of what comes next in addition to just an overall grooming of the front and the back. 
maybe not today since it's so windy, but definitely this weekend when I think it's supposed to cool down. So don't forget, give some messages of support to anybody whose gardens right now are suffering because of weather. I love this community. I love the way you guys support one another. Make sure to put what your zone is. And if you have suffered any kind of weather related hardship this year so that we can, we can support you. So there you go. Let me know what's coming up next in your gardens. Well, here's my outfit of the day. First of all, there's no good hair days right now because not only is it windy, but the humidity is moving back in. So here's my ensemble for today. These are leather drop earrings that were actually gifted to me by my friend Jenny. You can actually find these a number of different places. I saw something similar at Target, I believe. I'll try to find something and put a link below. Um, the dress is from Forever 21 and my booties are from Forever 21. And while I think of Forever 21 as kind of fast fashion that I don't buy very often because so much of it doesn't seem to be of necessarily of good quality, but this outfit definitely is not fast fashion because I bet I've had this dress for eight years and these booties for the same and I wore it over and over again both in the fall and in the summer. I really like wearing cool dresses like this sometimes even to work out in the yard and um, and also just out and about. Last year for I think it was for or year before last for Mother's Day my son treated me to a Billy Joel concert in Denver and I remember wearing this dress and these booties to that concert so they are they're great multitaskers for those of you that held in here for the fashion epilogue you'll get an additional treat because these are the boxwood topiaries that I just talked about in my walkabout my what comes next walkabout and you can see that definitely this it may have stayed green for a while but now it's starting to brown there's the other one down there Stuart that looks like it's alive but it's but it's absolutely not and then here are the other two little topiary forms that I told you that I've got these marching up and down the steps and I'll start clipping these back to form so I have some perfect egg shapes. So there you go. You guys have a great day.